This is Magic and the Law of Attraction with your host, Madam Pamita. Episode 8. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Madam Pamita, and you're listening once again to Magic and the Law of Attraction the podcast where you'll learn how to transform your life in magical ways to make it the very best that it can be. I got my mojo working, but it just don't seem to work on you. I'm not even going to attempt to sing like Muddy Waters. (laughs) Hey, is your mojo working? Do you even know what a mojo is? Well, here's a hint. It's got nothing to do with Austin Powers' sex appeal. Today's episode is not only about getting your mojo working, it's about making your mojo in the first place. Yep, episode eight is all about the mojo, mojo bags. I just got back from my trip to France and I have to admit it has been really hard for me to get this episode out. I don't know if it's the jet lag or just from hitting the ground running with work for clients and getting back in the shop, but what I need right now is a mojo bag that will give me an extra week to get caught up. I don't think there's a spell for that yet. At least I don't know of one. But in today's episode, we're going to cover mojo bags for pretty much any other kind of intention that you might have. So Jorge from Newington, Connecticut wrote in and he said, what about mojo bags? How do we put them together? Are there any do's and don'ts? And how do we feed them? I love those questions, Jorge. There are a lot of them, but mojo bags inspire a lot of questions. And you know, like, what's the deal with mojo bags? What are they exactly? Well, in this episode, we'll dive into it all. Everything you've ever wanted to know about mojo bags, what makes a mojo bag a mojo bag, the how-tos, like how to make them, how to feed them, why you might want to make one in the first place, all of it. And at the end of the show, I'll give you the instructions for a really powerful mojo bag that you can make for activating good luck. So let's just jump right in. First, what is a mojo bag? I mean, what does a mojo bag look like? I mean, how would you know you were looking at one if you were looking at one? Well, if this were a video show instead of a podcast, I could show you a typical mojo bag right now. And here's a little secret. I do have a video about making mojo bags and you can see it if you go to hoodoohowto.com. But since you're with me here and this isn't a video, I'm going to describe one for you. A typical mojo bag is a small flannel drawstring bag. It's about three inches by four inches, and it's most likely going to be made with red flannel. It might have a small charm, like you would find on a charm bracelet sewn onto it. The drawstrings at the neck of the bag would be tied shut, and the bag itself would probably look pretty flat, meaning it would have a few items in it, but it wouldn't be stuffed full like a pillow. So now that you're looking at this little flat red flannel bag, at least in your mind's eye, you might be asking, what makes it magical? Ah, a mojo bag is a special kind of amulet or what I'd like to call a portable spell. They contain charms, botanicals, curios, and other items. Yes, but these items are put together for a specific magical result, like attracting love or for protection or for prosperity or good luck and and so on. So for those of you who are familiar with folk magic, these little bagged amulets might sound familiar. There are lots of folk magic traditions that have spells where you carry magical items in small bags. There are Latin American packet amulets that we can find in botanicas or um, Native American medicine bags that hang around the neck and are made with leather or European charm bags. They're all cousins of the mojo bag. But mojo bags are unique. They come to us from the African-American hoodoo tradition. And what makes mojo bags so special and different from other bags, like let's say a medicine bag, are a few things. First, the belief that a mojo bag is alive. Most folk magic traditions will use herbs and curios, but hoodoo practitioners in particular see these herbs and curios in a special way. They see them as having an energy of their own, an individual spirit that makes them alive. Okay, let me get 
a little nerdy here and say it's kind of like when Yoda talks about the force being in the rocks and the trees. It's the vibration, the power and the energy that these natural items have on their own. And it's what makes these items into tools to help us magically, what you've heard me call our magical allies. The second way that a mojo bag differs from other magical bags is that when you make a mojo bag, you bring it to life, meaning that you or the person making your bag will do some ritual to give some extra special energy or power to the bag of those living items. This can be something like waving the bag through specially prepared incense smoke or breathing intentionally into the bag to bring it to life. But however you do it, when a mojo bag is made, it's not just a bunch of twigs and leaves thrown into a bag. There is some effort to create a magical ritual object that can then make a positive change in your life. The third way that a mojo bag is slightly different is that once they are prepared, they need to be worn in a secret place, preferably close to the skin to sort of build up the bond with you. Generally, this means wearing the mojo bag in your bra or pinned to the inside of your waistband or pinned to your underwear. Some mojo bags, particularly love mojos, like to stay in those close and intimate places. But others, like prosperity mojos, may spend a week being close to you to connect to you and then be perfectly fine with being carried in a pocket or purse. The fourth way that they are different is that mojo bags are treated in a way that is fairly unique. There is a strict no-touch policy with mojo bags. You may touch your own mojo bag, and of course, if you're having it made by someone else, they may touch it. But other than that, no one else should see or touch your mojo bag. If they touch it, it is dead. They have taken the energy and the life out of it and really they've taken the power out of it. And there's nothing that can be done except to remake it or to start with a whole new mojo bag. If someone sees your mojo bag, it won't kill it, but you will definitely have to revive it by feeding your mojo bag. And that's the fifth thing that makes a mojo bag different from other magical bags. You feed a mojo bag. This can be done by smoking it in incense, waving it through the smoke of a ritual incense, or by applying whiskey or Hoyt's cologne or Florida water or a little spiritual oil to the bag to feed it and give it some vitality. This really is the gist of what makes a mojo bag a mojo bag. It's treated as if it were a living thing. I like to think of treating a mojo bag like a pet. You bond with it, tend to it, care for it, and in return, it performs a service of some kind. This is a great way to check in and see if you've done something that would harm your mojo bag, by the way. Once in a while, I get a message from a client that says something like, I sent my mojo bag through the washing machine. Is it still alive? Well, you can ask yourself this. If you sent your hamster through the washing machine, would it still be alive? Well, we know the answer to that. So you want to treat your mojo bag with care and respect and gentleness and make sure that no one else sees it and no one else touches it. So let's talk about the process now of making a mojo bag. Now, before we get started, a little caveat here. Every root worker or magician has their own particular way of doing spells. So this is not the only way of making a mojo bag. It's just my way of making one and one of many ways of making a mojo bag. You're going to find if you do more research and so on, that there are some variations on how people make them. So this is my way. So to start, you need a red flannel bag. A mojo bag is traditionally made with red flannel, but you can choose another color flannel bag that corresponds to the goal of your spell. And to learn what colors work best for what kind of work, you can take a listen to episode two, which is all about color magic. So to create your mojo bag, you would take your red flannel bag and first sew a charm on the outside, thinking of or saying your intention for the mojo bag as you sew. You would pick a charm that matches your intention. For example, if you were 
doing a mojo bag for love, you might choose a heart-shaped charm. Or if you were doing one for success or power, you might choose a crown. So try to find a charm that matches or somehow has a symbolism that corresponds to the intention of your mojo bag. Once you've sewn that charm on, you would then write a petition on a small piece of paper and fold it toward you and place it in the flannel bag. A petition can be a written prayer or intention of what you would like the mojo bag to do. For example, you could write, I attract luck, or may I always have abundance. So after you've done that, Next, you would add herbs and curios that correspond to your outcome, asking the spirit of each item to work on your behalf. And after that, you might want to add some personal concerns. Personal concerns are items with your DNA, such as hair, fingernail clippings, and so on. These work to personalize and bond the mojo bag to you. After all of these have been placed in the flannel bag, You would gently breathe into it, giving the mojo bag life to work with you and for your intention. And then finally, you tie the mouth of the bag shut with three knots while praying over it. And then you would anoint it or feed it with the whiskey, cologne, or oil that you have selected. When you anoint your bag, you are just putting a few dots of the alcohol or oil on the bag. You're not dousing it. The traditional way and the way that I like to do it is to put five dots on in a pattern like the five on a die. So that means one dot in each of the four corners and then one dot in the center. And then after you've done this, you want to give your mojo bag a name and speak to it and ask it to work on your behalf. For the first seven days that you own it, you will want to keep it as close to you as possible, wearing it next to your skin and sleeping with it under your pillow. You would only set it aside in a special place when you bathe or shower or go swimming. You don't want your mojo bag to get wet. After seven days, you may continue to wear it next to your skin, or you can carry it in a pocket or purse, or keep it in a special place and only carry it when you need its effects. About once a week, you will need to feed your mojo bag. Feeding can be done by passing the mojo bag through incense or by dabbing it with five spots of the oil or alcohol. So now that you know how to make and care for one, why would you want to have a mojo bag? Well, for a couple of reasons. First, a mojo bag is ongoing work. Think about your magical and spiritual goals and determine if your goal is something that you want to happen one time, or if your goal is something that you would be wanting ongoing. If it's something that you want ongoing, then a mojo bag is great for this. It's perfect for a continual spell. So for example, if you want to do a spell to get someone to fall in love with you, that is one-time work. You know, they're, they're not in love with you and then they fall in love with you. But if you want to do a spell to get someone to stay enchanted with you over the long haul, then that's the perfect kind of work for a mojo bag. Why? Well, if you're working with a mojo bag correctly, you're wearing it or carrying it every day, or at least every time you want its effects. You're tending to it by feeding it once a week, and you're paying attention to it. That kind of attention produces ongoing results. So think about your intentions, your magical goals, and if what you want is something ongoing like prosperity, success, protection, love, then a mojo bag might be the perfect portable spell that you can take with you wherever you go. So now that you're convinced that a mojo bag is something you need to bring into your life, I'm going to share my fabulous good luck mojo bag recipe with you. Good luck is something that I think everyone loves to have. It not only means good luck in gambling, it means good luck in life, being in the right place at the right time, lucky breaks, and so on. And since it's something that we all want ongoing, then it's perfect for a mojo bag. So for this mojo bag, I would recommend getting a red flannel bag and the following ingredients. A lot of these ingredients are not the typical thing that you will find around the house. 
so they would have to be purchased from a metaphysical store. I have them up on my website, parlorwonders.com, so you can always find them there. Anyway, for this mojo bag, you would need a small four-leaf clover charm, a small paper for your petition, a calamus root for your strength and empowerment, devil's shoestring to protect your luck, five-finger grass to bring luck to anything that you touch, a small lodestone to attract that good luck, a small high John the Conqueror root to be in the right place at the right time, a chunk of dragon's blood resin for luck and protection, a silver mercury dime or a dime of the year you were born. And this is to add to your luck in risky situations. And finally, you would need fingernail clippings from each finger from both hands to personalize your mojo bag and bring luck right straight into your hands. So the first thing to do, of course, is to sew the four-leaf clover charm onto the bag and then add the petition paper that you've written stating, luck follows me wherever I go. Add each of the ingredients one by one to the red flannel bag, asking it to do its specialty. And then finally breathe into the bag with three slow breaths. Once you've done that, tie the end of the mojo bag off, pulling the drawstring shut and then wrapping the strings around the end of the mojo bag so that it's closed tightly. And again, if you want to see this, check out my video, whodohowto.com, and you'll see exactly how to close a mojo bag. After you've done that, apply a dot of spiritual oil or spiritual alcohol in five spots, one on each corner and one at the center. Now tuck the mojo bag in your bra or pin it to your waistband and get your mojo working. If you'd like to try out this recipe or want some general guidelines on making mojo bags, then you'll definitely want to check out the show notes for episode eight at magicandthelawofattraction.com. There will be a link there while I'll have the recipe for making this good luck mojo and the link to the video showing you how to make a mojo bag. Well, that just about does it for this jet lagged episode of Magic and the Law of Attraction. A big thank you to Jorge for submitting the question for this week's episode. And if you have a burning question about spells, hoodoo, law of attraction, and any other magical topic, you can go to magicandthelawofattraction.com and submit your questions there. I always get so happy reading about what you're interested in. And if your question gets chosen for a future episode, you get a gift certificate to my online store, Madame Pamita's Parlor of Wonders. So make your way over there and check it out. I want to give a big shout out to the amazing folks who have left reviews for the show on iTunes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the following fabulous listeners. To Not Ever, who said the podcast is packed full of useful information and very well done. To Crimson Minx, who says, I love this podcast. To Nickname D, who said, the podcast is a charming primer in hoodoo basics and put a cute little heart emoticon. That was awesome. To Wizen, who said, I was looking for a podcast that would hold my interest and I found you. To Bella Dolce Beauty, who says, the podcast is absolutely perfect for those of us just starting on the sometimes overwhelming journey of using spells. To Danny V, who says, Madame Pamita offers an enchanting experience of love and light through her podcast. Uh, thank you, Danny. To Jay Pistolino, who says, the podcast is great for beginners and more experienced folks. And to Jewel721, who says, I always look forward to every episode. Thank you so much, you guys. So many of you mentioned that you like the sound quality of the podcast too. And so I have to give a big shout out to my sound guy, Jill who always makes me sound so good. If you ever want to do your own podcast, let me know and I'll hook you up with the best sound guy around. Anyway, thank you again for all the kind words. They really warm my heart. And since podcasts live or wither away by the reviews and stars, you're breathing some beautiful life into our little podcast, just like breathing life into a mojo bag. We got to think of a name for you guys. Um, Magic and the Law of Attraction Coutures? Nah, it's too long. Uh, Attraction Coutures? I don't know. Maybe you can come up with some better name for all of you. Anyway, last week we decided to run a contest for all the Attraction Coutures. 
to pick our favorite written review from the week and give that person a free 30-minute tarot reading with me. And we have a winner. This week's winner is M. Kreitlow 77 who says, I started watching Madame Pamita's YouTube channel about a year ago. This podcast is the perfect next step. I love the information. It's beginner information without talking down to someone. And it's also the next step information without going over your head. Madam Pamita seems so welcoming and so willing to share that it pulls you right into her class. I love listening while I'm working and then go home and sit down with a notebook and listen again. Great podcast, Madam Pamita. Thank you for sharing your time and information with us. Hey, it is totally my pleasure. So M. Kreitlow 77, please send me an email so we can send you your gift certificate for a 30 minute reading. I think having that contest was super fun and I think we should do it again. So let's do it again this week. Go to iTunes, subscribe, and leave a review, and we'll pick our favorite written review from the week and give that person a free 30-minute tarot reading. It could be you. And whether we pick you or not, I will definitely give you a shout out on the podcast. Name will go out into the universe to be picked up by aliens doing a SETI program on a planet far, far away. So get your review in right away and you might win. I've got so many great things for you, Attraction Coutures. I think that's growing on me, actually. (laughs) If you head over to parlorwonders.com, you can pick up a free copy of my gorgeous illustrated ebook, Seven Secrets to Supercharge Your Spell Work, and you get it just for signing up for my Spell a Week newsletter. The newsletter gives tons of great information every week on how to work intentionally, traditional rituals, all kinds of good stuff, and whatever's going on here at Parlor Wonders. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I'm looking forward to next week when we will be talking about making contact with your spirit guides. Until next time, this is Madame Pamita saying, keep making your life the most magical adventure ever. Ever.